Hi everyone! Welcome to Artsonia's After School Art Club. Today we have a fun art project from Kimberly Medsker Mahalik, an art teacher from Maine. Hope you enjoy the video and don't forget to have your artwork uploaded to your Artsonia gallery. Hi everybody, my name is Kimberly and I am a high school art teacher in Maine. I am also an art club advisor. Uh, I have many students that love photography and they like to create alternate prints. And so today I'm going to teach you about cyanotypes. And cyanotypes are essentially sun prints, so you have to have sun. And thankfully today it stopped raining, and so I'm going to use the sun to create art. Essentially the way to think about this is you're creating a, a print, almost like an x-ray, or if you're a photography student who's used film photography, it's like using light from an enlarger and you are blocking the light with an object or a transparency to create a print. And there are many, many different ways to do this that are really great for all age levels. So I'm going to show you kind of the easiest way to do it, and then I'm also going to end up with more advanced and ways to extend this. So first of all, to cover like materials, cyanotype fabric is not cheap. It's, it's pre-treated fabric that reacts to, again, it reacts to the sun. So these average about one to two dollars a sheet. You can buy them on Amazon or you can buy them at, at big art stores. It isn't, uh, it isn't paper. Again, this, this specific product is a fabric treatment. So I am going to start with showing you how to do it with just basic objects. So this is something that any age group can do. Like I have, oh, I have two little boys. Um, five and seven, and they can easily do this. And then I'm also going to show you how to create with transparencies. This is, again, a, a, a negative, um, and the sun will be blocked by where there's black ink, and it will only print the, the white, the, the part where the sun is. Okay, so like with any art, you need to think about composition. Composition is how you arrange objects on a piece of paper. So when I'm using these toys, I need to think very, very carefully about what types of um, patterns I could create or what type of shadows I'm going to create. Because again, cyanotypes are, are a sun print from the shadow that is projected from your object. So this looks pretty good. I want to make sure I think about how many edges are activated. I want to think about my positive and negative space. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this up in just a second um, and pull out my fancy paper. Another option that I'm going to do is using one of my students' ink drawings. So in another video, I'll show you how to make them inverse, but for this, I have already printed her, her drawing. This is actually, it was also used for a cover on our, on our book that we produce about art and writing it. High school. So this is her original drawing. I scanned it and then I inverted it. Again, an invert is the opposite of uh, black and white. So I'm going to use an invert and then I'm going to use an invert of another student's portrait that she took in photography. Again, just to get a, a visual example, this would be what's called a positive and this would be what's called a negative. So the dog, um, it's photographed so we normally see it. This is the positive, and the opposite of that is the invert. That's the negative. You need an invert to create the positive with cyanotypes or with photography. All right, so I'm going to pause this and turn it to the sunshine. All right, so now I've moved out to the sunshine, and it's really important because we are making art with shadows that you're actually not in a shadow. You have to be in direct sun for this process to work. Otherwise, you're not going to be creating a shadow with your transparencies or your objects. So I'm going to uh, take out a few sheets of the cyanotype fabric, but I'm going to do it one at a time so that it is exposed when I want it to be. So there's two sides. You can expose either side. So this first one I'm going to do with Glass. This is a contact print holder that we use in the darkroom. Um, it's going to help push the image down on the fabric. So 
that one is now being exposed. So the timer on the direction, say between three and 15, which is obviously really general when it comes to time, three and 15 minutes. So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna shoot for five minutes for each of these. Okay, so I'm gonna set up a second one. Again, I take out the fabric one at a time, and then I'm going to place it under glass. The transparency has to block the, the fabric, right? It has to go on top because you are creating a shadow. So those are two that would be the more advanced that you have to prep for. These are the ones that are more for any age group to do. They're super fun go pretty quick. So taking on a piece of fabric, I'm thinking about my composition. I'm going to put the crab down and I'm going to put the lobster down. They kind of look like they're talking to each other. And then I'm going to do one last one. It's going to be just this dinosaur. So I put the fabric down and I'm going to lay out the dinosaur. The dinosaur is going to be somewhat um, someone a little bit warped coming off because of the angle of his shadow. All right, so it's super hot outside right now, and I don't have sunscreen on, so I'm going to turn this off and go back into the shade as the timer clicks. All right, so it's been about four minutes, and the sun is very intense today, so I'm actually going to remove the, the fabric and I'll go in order just to see what we have. So I'm gonna take the objects off and you're gonna see there's gonna be a shadow print. I'm gonna go put it directly in the water. Right okay, there. and now I'm gonna finish with the next three. I'm gonna pull them and then I'm gonna take you uh, to my tub of water and show you the next step. Okay, so I'm back up in the shade and I have a tub of water. You can easily do this in the kitchen sink, just put, we're in a bathtub, just uh, make sure you plug it. So I'm gonna put my fabric inside the water. The water is cold and you can see that on this, before I even get it wet, it's like a, a bronze color where the sun was hitting it. There's one more. Again, it's shadows. And I'm pushing it around with my hand the water starts to turn color, and what will end up happening is that where the shadow was will be a light blue. This is a monochromatic blue cyanotype. Um, and where there was a shadow, where the light was being blocked, again, that's light blue, and where there was bright sun, that turns into dark blue. So they're supposed to rinse for five minutes, and you should change the water a couple times while you're doing it because you can see even from the um, the bucket the Tupperware container here it's starting to turn green. So I'm just going to keep on rinsing. I'm going to actually take these back into my classroom in just a second to switch the water but while that is rinsing while it's kind of soaking to release um, some of the, the chemicals. I'll show you some, some final products. And cyanotypes can easily just be like a, a, you know, a mounted work of art. And you can also think about these a little bit more creatively. I'll show you some images of how I may turn the prints into art, um, like for hats. I had students that turned theirs into stuffed animals just by cutting the fabric and gluing it or stitching it together. And the, this is a piping clover. This is a certain species of rabbit. They were doing a project on endangered species. Another option is if you use a small image like this, you can create multiple prints on one sheet of fabric. So you can use, again, multiple, um, multiple images on one piece of fabric, which is awesome. So I've taken these and then stitched them together and I've put them on hats which I'll show you the final products and then don't 
it. Don't be discouraged if you get one that doesn't come out well. What I don't want you to do is feel like you need to throw this away because you can actually use these scraps and this whole bag is full of cut scraps. And they're all different textures. Obviously they're going to be blue and you can then create art out of the scraps. And again, I'm going to show you a, a finished product that I just did myself. So I'm going to take you into my classroom. Okay, so the prints are now all rinsed. Um, the water is, is clear and you can see again where the sun hit, that is dark blue. And where there was a shadow blocking the sun, that is light blue. So since they're dripping wet, we need to dry them. And just like any fabric, you can either hang it to dry using like clothes pins or a clothes line. I have a drying rack that we use for prints and painting, so I'm going to put it right on. and you just wait for them to dry. Yeah. 